Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Devistry. Um, finally, I have some time on my hands to make some more videos and I'm, uh, I'm actually going to keep making more videos on the channel. Uh, get, it, get some more tutorials and some more projects up that you guys have loved in the past. So thank you all of you who have been subscribed in the, the time I haven't really been making videos. Um, but we're going to get started again and I'm going to get started with an, um, a problem that I have had when I was creating Express servers and React applications, React frontends. And that is that React is its own project and Express is its own project, right? So React has its own, or at least if you use the Create React app system, it has its own solution for serving your files uh, in development mode, right? You run NPM runs, uh, run start and it creates a little server that serves your your React app. And then if you wanted to also run an Express backend with API endpoints for some data or database connection or whatever, you would have to run that separately. And because you're running them as separate instances, they will be running on separate ports. So Create React app runs on port 3000 by default and I'm running this Express app on port 8080. And then, well, the server is going to refuse requests from the, re uh, re re the React app because they're on different hosts, you get the cross-origin resource sharing error, the course error. So you would have to set up course. And now you're dealing with two folders, one for your client React code and one for your Express server code. And then when you want to deploy your app, you have to find some hosting solution for your static React application. And you, find, you have to find another solution, something like Heroku or whatever, for your Express app. So now you're dealing with two servers that are serving the same website which is not ideal because you might have to pay for both of those servers. Um, and now you're dealing with two different projects. You have to put them in two different GitHub repositories or whatever, you know, it's just annoying. So what I want to show you in this example is we're going to build this web page. <laughs> it's a, an example web shop. Really the only thing that it shows is this data, but this is not hard coded in HTML or in a React app. This is a React app, but this data comes from an Express.js backend I show you that right here. So I have a server folder and I have my app.js and we have this array of items that we're serving through this endpoint. So if you're familiar with Express, this shouldn't be too difficult. And I also have my React app that gets that data, puts it into state. I have a little function to render the items and then we create this page. So I have an Express app and a React app, but I have them in one project. There is the React app and there's a server folder and through a little bit of tweaking of the default workflow of Create React App and how you would normally set up your server, you can actually um, set up a server that works in a production environment and we can serve the data from the same host as where your React App is, is running from. For example, I'm running on localhost port 8080. This is the home page. This is that app component, but I can also request slash API slash items. And that is that JSON information that we are getting to populate this page. So it's running on the same host. It's not ru running the React app in one um, host or domain and the Express app in another one. So in this video, I would like to show you how we build this example web shop. And it's not really about this app. It's a really simple app. You should know how to do this if you know Express and React already. But I'm going to show you how we can combine Express and React in one project, this one folder, and how we can host the server, the Express server, and how we can make that Express server serve the React app. And this is something that many people don't know about. Actually, when I was looking for this many years ago, when I was learning React and Express, I couldn't really find a solution. Um, but it's actually quite simple. So let's get started with a little example in this video, and uh, hopefully you'll find this really useful. All right, so let's go ahead and create an example. Uh, you can follow along with the code if you want. There's also a link in the description down below for the uh, repository for this code. So you can just look at the finished code if you want to just check it out already. Um, but you can follow along. I'm just going to build a little example app where we're going to combine the React app and the Express app together to serve it all from, well, from the one Express app. That's the whole idea. Now, um, I'm first going to set up an example of using React and Express um, in the way that most people would do it, where they would have the two projects separate. There's one folder for React and one folder for Express. And I don't like to do that because then 
I have to host two different things. I have to host my, uh, basically a static file server. Uh, we can use something like Netlify or set up your own server that hosts the static build React app. And then I also have to have some kind of node server that runs the Express app. So I need to have two servers. Well, Express can serve static files. And when you build a React app, it becomes static files. Can we not just use Express to serve that? Well, yes, we can. But first, I'm going to create an example app. We're going to create a an, really simple web shop. It's not at all a web shop. We're basically going to have an array of items in the web shop on our server. I want to get them on my browser um, in the React app and then display them. Just so we have some data transfer back and forth. But I'm using the example of a web server. So what most people would do is they would create a folder called client and a folder called server. And then they would in those folders create their React app and their Express server. We are not going to do that way. We are going to just create the React app. So I'm going to open the terminal in the folder where I want to create the React app and we'll run npx create-react-app and we'll say period to say it needs to be in this folder. We're not going to create another folder within it. So you should be familiar with React and Express as I've mentioned. So this should be familiar how, you know, how to set up a React app with create React app. Now, this is core, of course, going to set up Webpack, which is the module bundler. It bundles everything together into one static JavaScript file. All of the React source code, all of the other packages that React depends on, all of your code, it will all be bundled together into one output file when you build your, uh, your app. And we can see that in a moment. So here we have our React app uh, created. We'll just wait for this to be done. There it is. So this, of course, is the, the example React app where we have um, a, basically a div with a header and an, an image and a paragraph and a link that says learn React. And we can serve it locally if I were to run npm run start. So what it's going to do is going to run the npm script start, which is going to run React scripts start. Now, what does React scripts start really do? What well, actually does quite a few things. It's going to build the application and then it's going to host it on a local development server running on localhost port 3000. So it has already built all of the source code. It has bundled everything together. Let's open these up side by side. It has bundled everything together and now it's hosting that resulting code on a an, an little server that it is uh, running here from the terminal. And you can see that example React app here, right? Now, this is now the server, this, this Webpack I think it's just Webpack Development Server plugin. Um, it's just serving it locally. But of course, when we are going to want to publish and, and deploy our app, we're going to have to get some kind of static file server like Netlify, or you set your own thing up on DigitalOcean or whatever you're doing. And then you just put the build folder, which you can generate by running npm run build. It's going to generate that build folder. And this build folder holds all of the, um, the static files. So you can see it holds all of the files from the public folder, like the favicon. There's a little icon here in the tab. It holds the logo that we see spinning here. There's even a manifesto JSON uh, for uh, resp uh, not responsive, progressive web apps. Um, and it has, of course, the index.html file that is in here. Of course, all of this is minified. But you can see that this uh, HTML file has been given this script tag. That's the only difference between this HTML file and this one, apart from the fact that the, com the comments are re removed. So that build folder has been given this script file and it, it points to one of the JavaScript files that has been generated in the static folder. And this is just bundled and minified all of the code from React and our own source code together. But in other words, this build folder is just a normal website's folder where we just have a static index.html file which simply runs a JavaScript file. And the JavaScript file holds all the code that puts the React components in the, in the root div here. But this means that if I just close everything, we no longer have that local development server running. If I just change directory into the build folder, now I can actually use whatever serving solution I want. For example, I have installed a live server on my computer here. And if you want to use that as well, you can just use npm to install live 
dash server and you can install it with dash g globally so it's just installing it on your computer not in this package so we have a live server installed and now in the build folder i'm just going to run live server and it's just going to run um it's go just going to serve the build folder as a static website and well when you would open up your browser for that it's simply going to open up the index.html file like any static web server would serve the index.html file on the the root path like slash or nothing right so this is just on port 8080 on my local host we're running the app and you can see it's exactly the same app so this build folder is just a folder holding files which we need to serve and we can do that with express so let's go and uh, close that close live server and let's go ahead and build an express server now you can put it into a different folder but i'm going to put it in this same folder because i like to keep everything combined we're going to create one project that does everything so we're going to create a server folder in here and i'm actually going to manually create a package.json file in there json now yes you can use the npm init command so you could cd dot dot slash server so now we're in that server folder you could run npm init and then you get all of those questions what is the version what is the description of your app i'm not going to have any version or description we just need a package.json so we can install packages for just the server folder, not for the React. We don't need Express for the React app, we need it for a server. So we just have an empty object in the server's own package.json. Make sure you've navigated in the terminal to the server folder and now we can simply npm install express. So here we're going and install express, which of course is the most used um, web server framework apart from just static file servers that ser uh, or maybe um, something like Apache that serves PHP files. But as an actual framework, Express is the most used in the world. So that's why I'm showing you it with Express. Um, and now we can simply create Express code. So I'm going to create an app.js file and this is the file I would like to use to start the server from. Well, to start an Express server, we need to import Express. So we will require the Express package. We're just going to import whatever express exports um, and that is actually a function that we can run to create an express app so we run express and it creates an express app and um, now we can start this app so i'm going to create a variable called port and i want to set it equal to port 8080 that's the the port i want to run my server on. why 8080 well it's because the port 80 is on most uh, servers that is the default port for serving a web server from but because it's already reserved for that, we can't create our own server on my local computer because it's a reserved port, so we just use 8080 or whatever other port you want to use. Now, if we're going to deploy this app to an actual hosting solution like Netlify or Heroku, well, Netlify can't run Node apps, but something like Heroku or some other alternative, they will, of course, decide on which port we want to run the server because they have shared computers uh, computers with all kinds of servers running on there on different ports so you use a shared solution they will assign a port that they want us to use in the process.env.port environment variable so what we're going to do is we can say hey the port we want to use should be uh, should be received from the environment variables port but if that is not assigned we'll simply use port 8080 in other words if we are in an in a production environment and there is a port environment variable assigned by the hosting provider we use that or if this is undefined we use this value instead and then we can simply say app dot listen on that port and we'll use a callback function to say when the app has started listening we'll just say server started so that we know that there are no errors and now all we have to do is really run node app and it's going to start the server or what I'm going to do is npm install node-mon globally dash g and we can run node-mon app and that's going to start node app but every time I change or make a save to my files it's restarting the server so I don't have to restart it manually and keep writing node app all of the time. So this is our basic express server now set up. Now what do we want to serve? Well we are going to create that fake example of a web shop, really simple example. Let's imagine that we have a database connected. I'm not going to connect the database. Feel free to use whatever solution you want for that. But let's imagine that we get some 
items in an array back from a database. And each item has a name. So we'll say we have a laptop that we want to sell on a web shop and they have a price. And we'll say the laptop is maybe $500. And then for good measure, let's have a second. We'll do name desktop as well. And let's say the desktop has a price of um, $700, whatever. So you can imagine that this data is something we get from a database. Now, our React app responsible for creating the view, the things that the, the user sees, the components, they need this data. The React app needs this data so that it can create elements showing the individual items. And there might be a link there so the user can click on it to go to that page. And then there might be a button there so the user can buy it. But the, the React app needs this data. So we need to set up an endpoint. We'll say app.get because the React app wants to get something with the get HTTP method from slash API slash items. Now I like to prefix all of my API endpoints with slash API, especially if you're using a React app. Um, because for example, if I would navigate to my React app uh, localhost 3000 slash about, well, that should be a page. But if I navigate to slash API slash something, I can then make sure that all of the API endpoints are handled by Express. They're not a page that React should uh, create. So I like to prefix everything with API. So all that we're now going to do is then in the handler function in the controller, when we get a request and a response object, we're simply going to use that response object to create a response. And we're going to send the items. Now items is an array and in express the send function, if it receives an object or an array, it will simply stringify that object or an array to JSON and send this data as JSON. So when our React will request slash API slash items, it's going to get the JSON data of this array. It's simply what this server at this moment will do. And we can test this because our server is running on localhost port 8080. Now there's nothing on slash 8080, but there's something on slash API slash items. And as you can see, the browser has now requested this data, so it simply prints it. But if I react that will request slash API slash items, we can then loop over this array and create components for each item. That's what we want to achieve. So next up, we go back into the React app. And let's just, uh, just, just clean this up a little bit. Um, because this is, all, of course, all of the default React uh, create React app code. Let's delete this app CSS file. Let's delete this test file, all of these CSS files. We'll just leave the app.js and the index.js there. And because I'm running on uh, a Linux um, platform here, there is no recycle bin. So I can, only temp uh, I can only permanently delete. So I have to accept that, which is a bit annoying. In the index.js file then, uh, let's also make sure we're no longer getting the CSS file. And we're not going to use the report web vitals, so we're going to get rid of that. And all that this index file, of course, will do is it will create the root element out of the element with the ID of root that it gets from the HTML file. And it's going to insert the app component in there. And in the app component, let's get rid of the CSS and the SVG. And the only thing I'm going to return from this is just the main element, which is going to say hello world for now. Let's put it into an, uh, an header. Actually, let's just do example web shop or web shop. So this is what our app will be, right? So our React app is simply this app component that will be rendered and it's going to insert the main element with an H1 and example web shop. But I want this component to receive those items so we can loop over them and create, um, create our uh, items. So for that, we need some state to store those items once we have received them in a React app. So we uh, destructure items and a set items function from use state. And I'm actually going to give it an empty array as default because items should always be an array. But of course, when this app loads for the first time, we don't have any items yet. So we need to fetch them, but that takes a bit of time. It's asynchronous. So during the time when React is rendering the items, we want to loop over the array. So that's why I'm making it an empty array because you can't loop over undefined. We get an error. You can't loop over that. You can't use for each or another loop solution. So we just set it to an empty array by default. And then once we get the items, when we have fetched them from the server, then we just 
replace the array with an filled array with items. Well, talking about fetching, we're going to use use effect to run this callback function whenever an effect occurs. And an effect, if you don't know, is anything that triggers the app function to run or this particular function component to run. And this can happen when the component is initialized for the first time, so when the page loads, basically. But it will also run effects or it will run the app function when we change the state. Now, I'm going to set up the fetch function to fetch the API slash items. And I only want to do it once when the app is loading or when the app has loaded into the browser for the first time. But then when we set our items, well, that would trigger another side effect. I don't want it to fetch again. So we're going to use use effect with an empty dependency array so that it doesn't have any dependencies which cause this callback function to run again. It's only going to do it once. There are no dependencies. If I were to put items in here, it will always run this callback function when items has changed. But I'm going to leave it empty so it will only do it once. And in there we'll simply run fetch. And we want to fetch from slash API slash items. But the keen eyed among you may already know that this is not going to work. Because we are going to run our local React development server on port 3000 or whatever it uses by default. And I'm running my Express app on port 8080. Those are two completely different domains, two completely different hosts or origins as they are also called. So whenever I fetch something from slash API slash items, it's going to fetch it from whatever server, whatever host is serving the React application. That's not going to be the same server as that host Express. And that is what we need to fix. I want to combine the Express in, um, uh, in the same project as our React project. Well, let's leave it like this for now. And we're going to try this out in a moment anyway. So we'll try to fetch to get slash API slash items. Then, once we have that, we get our response. And that response contains JSON information, of course. So um, we want to convert that JSON back into a JavaScript object, or in this case, an array. So we can use this response object in a callback function. Once we have the items, then take the response and run response.json. Luckily, the fetch response object has a JSON function, which will convert from JSON back into JavaScript. And that takes a bit of time. So then, once that is done, we have our data. We'll pass that into a function which will set the items, set items to that data, which will be the parsed JSON array, which is now a JavaScript array, and we put it into items. Now, of course, this is not going to work. If I would restart my npm run start my local development server on the port 3000, we see example web shop. But if we go to the console, <laughs> we see we get an uncalled improm promise syntax error, unexpected token, um, lesser than angle bracket, apparently coming from the doc type. Now, this is not, of course, the JSON with our items. This is an HTML document. Why is that? Well, let's just make this a bit bigger. Let's go to the network tab, reload. And you can see that we are requesting localhost slash. So that, of course, responds with the... Um, uh, the uh, React uh, HTML file, which will, of course, uh, run the React code and it will insert into the div with the idea of root our app. And then once our app has run, it's going to request items. So there is our localhost port 3000 slash API slash items request. But its response is the same HTML file. Now, the reason for this is that React creates a single page application. We just use this one HTML file and then depending on whatever component needs to be rendered, we're going to insert that in this div. So React thinks, cool, we're now on a different page and the page is in the address slash API slash items. Let's request the HTML file and we'll then let React figure out, hey, we are on the slash API slash items page. Let's create the component for that. So it still gets the HTML data. In other words, React doesn't know that we are trying to request something from a server, which is JSON. No, it's just requesting something from the React server, which will always serve HTML. And that's, of course, not what we want. So our solution would be to have Express serve the React application instead of this local development server, because then slash API slash data exists on that server 
and it will not serve the index.html file. How will we achieve that? Well, there's two ways that we can approach this. One is, so it's the simplest, let's shut down everything for now. We'll shut the server and the, um, well, the React server and the Express server down. The simplest would be to go to your folder where your request app is, uh, where your React app is, and run npm run build again. So now with this newly created code, we are creating an output build folder. And as we have already seen when I was hosting it with live server, this is just static files and express can serve static files. So let's drag the build folder into server and let's configure our server to serve the build folder. And it's quite simple. All that we have to do is use the express built in static function, which is going to be able to serve static files from a folder. What we want to say, you want to serve static files from the build folder. And then when there's a request for the index page, it's simply going to get the index.html file, which is going to run the JavaScript that creates the Re React app. That's all we need to do. So let's go back into the app.js file for the server. And then um, let's do it, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. After we have created the app, let's put it here below. Listen, we say app.use, which will run a middleware function for any incoming request. Doesn't matter which request it is, just use express dot static now we need to point this to a folder we want to serve so we're going to do um, build so what this says is whenever any incoming request comes in see if it's a request for a file that is in this build folder and simply serve it so now let's go back into our server again run node app and now if i would navigate to localhost port 8080 with nothing after it, this is just the root request or the index request. Look at that. We are serving our React app. Why? Because our browser is requesting, we can see it in the network tab. It's requesting specifically, let's make it a bit bigger. It's requesting localhost port 8080 slash. And any static web server, and because we're using the static function, Express is now partially a static web server. It's also a web API because we have our custom endpoint, but it also serves static files. Whenever there's a request for slash, that will be translated to the index.html file. Well, because we're using the app.use function, it's going to use the express.static function for any incoming requests. And it's going to see, hey, is it a request for something in the build folder? Yes, it is. It's the slash request, which is the same as the index HTML request. And that contains the JavaScript file, which contains all of the code that we have written to do something in this div ID root. And that's going to set up the example web shop. So at least we're now serving our Express app, uh, uh, serving our Java, sorry, uh, serving our React app from Express. Um, however, you can see. Um, or we can actually now check, hey, look at that. We now got our request for items. That has also been made, right? Because that comes from that app component, which has been created because the example web shop header comes from the app component. We know that. And now it is a request to localhost port 8080 slash API slash items. Obviously, because we're running this from the express server running on port 8080. So the fetch request for slash API slash items will simply come from the same host. No longer it's port 3000. No, we're now serving from port 8080. And of course, we're now going to get the array with items because slash API slash items is not something that our Express app finds in the static build folder. So it skips it. And then it's simply going to look down here for any other uh, endpoints I have uh, set up, and it is indeed a GET request for slash API slash items, and it's simply going to send the JSON. So if I now go to the components table, we see our one component, that's the app component, it's been renamed O by the bundler to reserve space, and we can check its state. So we see that our app has been assigned the individual items from the JSON that it has received. So it works. So all we now have to do is in our app.js, loop over the items and insert them in here. So let's do that, create a new function for this. A function render items, and we want to return items.map. If you're unfamiliar with map, I would recommend you look into it a little bit more, but map creates an, a new array based on an order array. So the order array would be items, 
and we're going to return a newly generated array. Now, why we would we want, want to do that? Well, we can determine what should be in that newly generated array that we will be returning from this function based on the old array. It's basically a for each loop. It loops over each item and it runs a function for each item. So we can request each item. And then we're going to run this callback function. And then from this callback function, we're supposed to return something to add to that new array, which will then be returned from render items. And what I want is to return a div. So we can just return JSX with, let's do an, um, an H3 with item.name. And we'll do a paragraph with the price colon spacebar and then we insert the item dot price so what this is going to do is it's going to loop over all of the items and create a new array with for each item a diff with the name and the price in a header and a paragraph and once that is done it's going to return that newly generated array and then we're simply going to run this render items function right here because the returned array of jsx elements will then be inserted here below the header one in the main element <coughs> so only one thing that we need to do Whenever you're just dumping an array of JSX elements, they need to have a key. So the, uh, the elements here would be the div, that's the parent. We need to give it a key. And I'm going to assign it to the index. So the second argument here for the callback function, second parameter, I should say, is going to be the index. So the map function will first give the value. That's the value we're currently iterating over in the loop, and then the index. And because the key needs to be unique, we can simply assign the index, because it starts at 0, and then it's 1, then it's 2, so it will always be unique. Now, this should work, at least hopefully, but we can't test it, because our server needs to run this build folder. So you thought for a moment, maybe, this is it. We just need to create the build folder and serve it. But development becomes a little bit more annoying with this. So let's go back in our React uh, app here. Sorry, in, in the uh, terminal that has our React Express uh, React folder. Um, and we can simply run npm run build again. And we'll fix a an, an better solution for developing with this. Because now I would have to run the build command, delete the old build folder, and drag and drop the build folder that we've just created into the server folder. And now we can try, try this out. Look at that. Now that I've reloaded, <laughs> we have everything working. So let's reload once more. So we get our local host request, which gets that minified plain empty HTML file. It contains the script tag somewhere. Somewhere within this. There it is, the script tag. Oh, we've already lost it. Here it is. This is a JavaScript file that contains all of the source code of React and my own code for making the app component and whatever that does. So it will run that code. And because of that... Uh, React's code will create the app component, which will run the items request. That's going to get the items. And then, because we are running set items, it triggers a side effect. We won't run fetch again because we have no dependencies for this callback function. But items has now been set. So we run the whole app function again. We redefine the function to render which items we now have. We return. And now we run render items, which of course returns the uh, array with elements for the items. And that's why we see them here. So this is working in a production uh, setup. The only downside is I I have to run the build command. Now, once I'm done developing and uh, it's time to publish a new version of my app, sure, then I can just run npm run build once and just delete the old build folder and just drag and drop the, ser the build folder in the server. And now if I were to uh, and we would have to set up Git to only serve the server folder to whatever hosting solution I'm using, let's say Heroku, I would then Git push only the server folder there. And I would, for example, set up a script here, of course. So we would do a uh, scripts, scripts, start script, because most um, server solutions, hosting solutions will run start uh, when we try to start it, and we will run node app. So now it's simply going to, on that hosted uh, solution like Heroku, it's going to run node app, and node app is going to host the build folder and whatever other endpoints we need. So this is all we really need now to set up this app for production. But we're not done yet, because every time I now want to make a change to my React code, I would have to rebuild it manually, drag and drop into the server folder, 
and then reload the browser manually. We have lost that hot reload that the npm run start, the React scripts start development server gives us. Now this doesn't work because it's running on a different port. It's running on port 3000. And because whenever you request something from this development server, um, let's re reload again, we of course are getting that, <laughs> that doc type, that, that HTML stuff again, which we don't want. We want basically to redirect any outgoing requests from this local development server on port 3000 to localhost port 8080. And there's a very simple solution for that. Go to the package JSON of the React app. We add a new entry and we're going to add a proxy. What is a proxy? A proxy basically is instead of, if I'm making a request from the code in this project, instead of sending it to the same host, localhost 3000, we can send it somewhere else. And I'm going to set it to HTTP colon slash slash local host port 8080. So now all you have to do is make sure you restart the development server. So it takes the proxy information. I've made a mistake and I thought, well, it's still not working. Why wouldn't it be working? Well, um, it's simply going to, yeah, there we go. It already it works. Um, it's simply going to host the React app in a development setup still on port 3000. And we can use that nice development, local development server with the hot reload cap capabilities and everything. Which is nice because now if I would make a change to my code here. So I would say, um, example web shop, lots of exclamation marks, save. Look at that, it immediately updates. This is beautiful. Um, we can develop in a very nice streamlined fashion. And all I would now have to do if I come back tomorrow is I would have to open up my terminal, go to my React Express, run npm run start to start that React development server. That will work, as you can see. And I would have to go and start my server. So cd into server and then run, um, well, I've already created the start script. We could also make a dev script. For example, then run node mon app. Um, and now I have a nice little shortcut to just run npm run dev and it's going to run nodemon app for me and we start the server. And now all that we need to do is basically those two steps. And now we have a nice local development uh, setup. I can develop the app. Um, it's served by, uh, so my, my API is served by Express, but we are testing the React site on localhost 3000. But then once I'm ready and I'm done, we simply shut everything down. We run npm run build. And the only thing I need to do to prepare for deployment is delete the old build folder, drag the new build folder in, and then use git push or whatever FTP or something to serve, to send the server folder to your server solution. We have to optimize build solution for React. And now whatever other code my server needs, I can put my model code, my database code, my routers in here. It's just a normal Express app. All of my other things, endpoints, can go in there. And when you want to serve that, um, now we simply just need to uh, serve. So uh, cd server npm run start, basically. Now it's going to start a server. And if I navigate to port 8080, it is still serving that React app, but it's now serving it from the build folder. And because it's on the same host, we no longer need that proxy, which is not present on the server because we put it in the package JSON for the overarching React app, but it's not in the server folder. So the proxy is no longer doing anything. We don't need it anymore because everything can just be received from the same host. There we have it. So that is how you can combine Express and React into one app. The only things you really need to do is to manually drag your build folder into your server folder and to use Express static build to serve the static build folder. And for developing locally, you would still run the React development server and you only need to give it a proxy so that any request outgoing will go to this address. That's the only thing you need to do. It's a bit of a longer video just to show those only things you need to do, um, but I wanted to show it in a nice example application. Source code for this whole app will be on, um, uh, on uh, GitHub. There will be a link in the description below. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like these uh, 
uh, these types of videos again, these short tutorials. Let me know in the comments if you have suggestions for other things that you want to learn. Let me know as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to make some more videos in the near future again to get this channel, uh, you know, a bit more up and running once more. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for all of you who have, who have subscribed in the past. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.